Welcome everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Facebook Live. I hope everyone is doing well. It is uh, November the 2nd year 2022. And I, I will get started with uh, introducing our panel today. Uh, we have Caesar, who is a channel and a spiritual teacher. Good evening, Caesar. You're here. And then we have Patricia, who's here. Good evening, Patricia, is part of our core group of meditators. And we also have Ken, who is part of our core group of meditators. And then we have Michelle, who, <laughs> after a long, long time, has joined us. And after a yoga retreat as well. So she's all relaxed and ready mm -hmm. to answer some questions. So I wanted to ask Patricia, actually, I don't know, Patricia, if you remember two, two weeks back when we were talking about manifestation and we could not finish the question because it was getting late. And I'm hoping even today we finished like at the top of the hour or a little after, because even I started waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. so. It is a long day, right? Without caffeine and chocolate. Um, so um, remember you were saying you were not really sure of, uh, you're too afraid to think about the future because you think that it is, uh, you don't know if it is something that you want to manifest in the future or if that is a limiting belief. Yes. So you want to uh, explain that? And while you're explaining that, Caesar can answer the question. And I see Kelly joining as well. So Kelly, uh, after Caesar, Kelly can speak. But uh, Patricia, if you want to explain it and actually post it on the chat as well. So I'll copy it to the other uh, Facebook uh, where the live is streaming. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for coming back to my questions. Ma yes, manifestations. So that question came from, I guess, a little bit of fear because I'm not, I wasn't trusting myself and I still not sure if, you know, what I'm manifesting, it's because obviously I'm still having layers and layers and layers and layers of my limiting beliefs. So if I want to get conscious, I was like, I would for a while probably just, okay, let's not manifest anything because what's coming up, you know, might be, or maybe because it's coming up, it's um, not. So my question would be, um, I just, maybe how to formulate even if you actually would like something in your human life, um, let's say a new job. I mean, I, I got a new job, but it was like partly, I, I guess I, I let go and I asked the universe. So, but be a little more, um, yeah, with, with, Cautious intention. <laughs> um, how do you formulate the question or the intention or what you want to manifest versus just staying open and letting universe where it goes through you as an intention and where you just opening up so what's out there and the universe is giving it to you, but how do you recognize it? So maybe it's a little bit tied to the free will, maybe still the ones that we discussed a while back. So the co-creation co of a manifestation, maybe. Uh, how do we have formulated? So <sighs> help me, guys. <laughs> I was to, um, it's too many words. Uh, is, that what you, is that go ahead Caesar go ahead yes I, I was just asking Poonam if that's that's where I was because maybe two weeks ago I was completely in a different 
on a different yeah, plane. I think you were asking that that is exactly what you were asking because we were going into manifestation and uh, we had ended somewhere there and then you said but I'm too afraid to manifest anything because I think that it is tied into my limiting beliefs. I, you don't know the difference between limiting beliefs, what is coming up for you, whether it is a limiting belief or it is something that you actually want to manifest. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. That you're not sure. So you're, you're, because you're not sure, you don't even want to go into, I want to manifest something in the future. Right. Right. So, because you have to, you kind of have to work towards that. So if you, words are very limited. And I know that um, uh, Louise Hay, years and years back, I actually read that from her. She said that she had some friend who wanted a new, new relationship with a man. And she put all the attributes. Yes, and she met a man, but he was married. He had all the attributes. He for, she forgot to write. He should be not. That she's, he should be available. <laughs> uh, exactly. So yeah, and <laughs> that stuck with me because how can I possibly know everything I have to write that you know somewhere in between the lines one of my limiting beliefs gonna show up and make it like let's say I want to silly thing I want to be um, wealthy right so I don't have to worry because that's a lot of people and then you know let's say someone close to me dies and I get inheritance I don't want to get that kind of wealthy you know what I mean right right Caesar you want to start start off and I will uh, respond sure. as well thank you hello everybody thank grateful you. to be here um so Patricia first of all <laughs> um there's a few things that you already touched on. So one, you got to get rid of the um, the negative beliefs that can't be in your vibration if you're expecting something to show up. And when you're manifesting, you definitely need to expect something to show up because it will, um, as long as you align with it, obviously. Um, yeah, so God, no, I just flashed everything there. So um <laughs> You have to want to allow these things. So there they call it the art of allowing um, or the art of receiving. Another thing in manifestation is you have to be very specific. In right, what that's, the, that's my problem. How, how specific? Because very specific. Yeah. So, I mean, being specific is, is very easy. But if it, it becomes too confusing or um, disruptive in the, in the thought pattern of trying to get there, which you don't really have to do, because once you send that rocket of desire out there from experiencing the contrast of being broke, you no longer put your attention on the void of having the money. So the first thing you need to do is clarify exactly what you're trying to manifest. So if it's, if it's money, put a dollar sign on it. And add sense. That's how specific it needs to be. Um, and then get out of the way. You know, you raise in vibrations, um, you know, and just try to create that feeling of what it's like to have $9,842.55 or better yet, 4.2 million. You have to be specific. Um, there is, you know, a point when um, that becomes generalized or you can generalize what it is, but it's always better to be specific in what you're asking for, or what you're trying to receive. So, so what happens if it doesn't, if it doesn't manifest? So I'm back. If it doesn't manifest, you're not in alignment. And that doesn't mean that it's not going to show up. Um, you might view this or others may view this as procrastination which simply means you are not ready for that. Now, you are not ready for that now. Um, so, and then when you have a thought like, this, oh God, what if this don't show up? Um, then you go into the worry state. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. I'm not going to pay my bills. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This is going to show up. And then guess what continues to show up? You are creating everything all of the time. So having said that, in trying to specifically manifest something 
again, you have to be specific in what you're asking for. If this isn't in alignment with your soul, chances are good it won't show up. However, once you become good, once you can correlate the way um, things actually come into your reality, then you build this confidence of sorts and you really can start expecting it. You really know how to put this into motion. And it's not about hard work. Everybody says, oh, you got to put the work in. The harder you work, the more you get. That's not true. That's definitely not true. The more you align with something, it's easier to simply float downstream and hold your hands out to catch the fish. If you want to swim upstream and, and go after them, you're welcome to do that too. So again, there's, you know, you have to be in the receptive mode. You have to have your vibrations up here. Money's not a low vibing thing. It's a high vibing thing. So where do we go from here? We get that, uh, we get that gratitude going. Gratitude, 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 gratitude all day long, every day. We also got to have th these thoughts of abundance. And it doesn't matter on what your um, conjuncturing, you know, as far as thinking of uh, in abundance, it could be the air you breathe, the sunlight, um, the clouds in the sky, um, anything. You think of abundance and you think of gratitude. Now you create these feelings within you. This is how you straight align but that I don't need anything. I actually, when I was doing that exercise with the leaves and I loved it so much, I, I felt so happy and so complete. So what's the point in manifesting anything if I already have everything? You will continue to have everything by having that attitude and that belief right there. That was the single most important thing in my life when everything that I kind of ever wanted just started to appear. And then I was like, well, when did I try to do this? When did I try to create that? Um, <laughs> it's been in the vortex forever and ever and ever. Um, and when I started feeling like I had everything as just as you said it, when I started to Is this Caesar or this is us? It's Caesar, right? I think Caesar froze. That's Caesar. I'll give it a minute so He's that he he, he manifested <laughs> a disconnection from the internet. Maybe it's in the feeling. If I hmm. If I don't appreciate something that manifests, mm -hmm. that's limiting me in some way, right? If it's pulling me down, make me feel bad or guilty or some of those negative feelings come up, maybe that's what's manifesting versus if it makes me happier, I see, you know, happy people, happy colors. So whatever comes up in that reality, would be my manifestation from how about how are you, how it is with you guys do you like let me post your offer? question let me post your question one more time so that because I saw Kelly join and I go ahead Michelle offer? yeah so I think it might be something to do with trust hmm. that you have the ability to manifest. And so from, I don't know, from what I sense is like, if I am too specific and it doesn't happen, so already the trust isn't there because what happens if it doesn't happen? So maybe it's a building of trust. So start with, like Eckhart says, when you're trying to bring presence, in the, or do it in the smaller moments, not when there's a big, right? When there's this big ask, maybe you want to hold off and ask, what are my little asks that, that you can see it happening more readily, not maybe $4.2 million, but is there something smaller where you could be specific about it that's not so complicated and work with that first so that you build the trust in your ability to But manage. those little things 
are here though. I don't have to manifest them, right? Okay, well, the next go. level of something, like for me, it was being here in Tennessee. I didn't have people that I really knew that I wanted a community to be able to deepen my practice. And I didn't say specifically how that was going to happen. I didn't know. I just, this is what I wanted. And, and it ended up happening, but I was really aware of how, maybe not at the moment that it appeared, but then I could see, oh, wow, I did bring this into my life and I brought that into my life and I was able to attend and my husband supported me and I was able to go and I was able to participate in things that fulfilled me. And that was really what I wanted to manifest in it. And I was able to, and it didn't take that much effort. It was just this desire to really want to connect in that, that way. But and then what's, gratitude. What's, mm -hmm. what's the difference and, between doing and manifesting? Because I think if I go to the store and buy myself a bag of blueberries, I'm really am I manifesting or or if I sit here at the you know at my table and close my eyes like imagine blueberries and all of a sudden there's a bag of blueberries. <laughs> you know, I've been being a little silly, but you know manifestation uh, maybe i'm not understanding the word manifestation it's not like it's appearing out of thin air right so is there anything okay. that you desire i see caesar joining okay. back a uh, mission that was your point right are you yeah. okay with it thank yeah, you sure. thank you michelle uh, trust i caesar, yes I caesar are you back i am okay and did you want to finish what you were saying sure. so then um, we can go to Kelly. I'd like to piggyback on what Michelle was just saying, and she's absolutely right. Um, it starts with the little thing, and it's just about recognizing that you are the creator of everything that shows up. So um, I 100% I agree with Michelle. That was great advice. Start with the little things, but be you still got to try to be specific. And again, it's not 100% necessary when you start becoming into the next level of manifesto, um, then you can be more specific. But um, for sure, there's a time to be general in what you're after. But you cannot have doubt because it, 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 do you understand that you're a vibrational being? Patricia, you fully believe that? You fully believe everything I, in life? Great, yes. When I, when I, most of the time when I, during meditation, yes. But in the real life, it's sometimes, you know, I still get stuck in my body and you know, but you, you still realize that you are a vibrational being, first and foremost, yes, all the time. Yes. Do you understand that you are an extension of source energy? <laughs> still. Yeah. Sometimes. I'm just, I'm just trying to help you understand um, the dance. Yeah. <laughs> So, right, you so are, it's not my ego. It's, it's that divine through me that's manifesting. It's not really. But it is you, you know, um, so the desire, like Michelle was saying, um, is born out of contrast. And, and this is an amazing thing that you feel as though you have everything. But then you're questioning whether or not, and it's good, um, you're questioning whether or not, well, how does this not show up? But you have to understand you are the creator of everything that shows up in your life, good or bad. You've created it all. <laughs> yeah. So, so most of it is from ego then, correct? That from limiting beliefs. Because... I mean, if I had to guess, I would probably say yes, because we're just getting a, a grasp on what ego is in our later years, right? So, you know, the things that you created to this point, perhaps maybe I come from the conditioned mind, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's you're you're reaching out to understand the process because it is real. It's a universal law. It More like that. taking responsibility, right? Instead yes, of blaming the rest of the world that, oh, you did this, did this. No, I did it to myself. Correct. But um, yes, yes. And, and once, like I was trying to say before, once you start correlating that, holy cow, and you can start putting the pieces together and go, wow, I did this. Intentionally, I did this. Deliberately, I did this. Pretty cool. Um, as Michelle was saying, this builds your confidence in your ability to manifest what you want through your control, not 
um, unconsciously creating things or unknowingly creating things that are showing up like, well, we're so Poonam a while back always talked about the point of attraction. And she would point out to me or people on the pen, what do you think your point of attraction was? You know, that this showed up. And that's when I really started to correlate. Oh yeah, there was a point of attraction on how I created this. You know, when was the moment, that aha moment, you know, that I was coming back to. And that was the little confidence builder that Michelle was talking about. That's really important. So you fully, really, truly know that you are creating all of this, good or bad. So again, you know, um, the best way to get there is, okay, do you want to go through the processes? It's one, you experience contrast. So you know what you don't like. Now you do know what you do like. Mm-hmm. That rocket of desire is immediately born. Poof. Step two, it is answered. It is given. Source, God, whatever you want to call it, answers immediately. That's not for you. It's there. <laughs> there it is. Now it's in your vortex waiting for you. Um, and if you don't understand what the vortex is, it's just this space that all of your desires that you have sent out there, the reality of all of that, a billion things over and over you've got enough in your vortex not to last you a lifetime yet you will have a billion more (laughs) and once you will start aligning with all that is all that is starts showing up in pieces um it's also sometimes referred to as the grid filling in you know you have to have been where you was to be where you're at now does that make sense the things that you have created until now had to be that way in order for you to be where you are to be where you're at and have what you have or not have now like the procrastination thing it just means you're not ready you're not a vibrational match to the desire that you had and we shoot desires without even knowing half the time mm-hmm. and that's relevant because it's still a desire and it's in your vortex now. But can you stop? Like if you realize that something got shot and you didn't really want it, can you take it back? <laughs> yeah, sure. Focus on the void of it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because when, when you see, like when you started this, uh, the question, you, you made a couple comments of, I felt personally that there was some heavy doubt. There was unsurety in not so much am i really creating all this or is this even possible does this really is this law of attraction really a thing plus judgment comes in too you know if yeah sure i know what i want if i even you know for sure no i mean to delve in just a touch deeper your soul knows what you want knows what you need And it is always constantly, constantly nudging you in the direction of that. It is then that we have to be still and present to receive that, to know where to go. When when life is, your soul is taking you to the path of least resistance, that means you don't have to do this to get where you want to go. You just effortlessly float down there and get there. So that's, in a sense, you know, what the soul is always doing for you and and aiding you to manifest what your soul really desires. It is when this aligns with soul or spirit that things come into fruition. Um, Again, and, and it's like a negative stuff. It's funny we're talking about this again because it was my conversation all day with one of my new workers who was just nonstop asking these questions. And in reiterating some of the things, it, it helped me learn. Um, things that I've read or seen that I've forgotten. So it was great. And everything always happens for a reason. The reason is you, obviously. Um, good or bad. We don't even like to use the word bad anymore because that's just the perception of something, right? Nothing is bad. Nothing is good. It just is. 
So in, in the manifestation thing, again, um, first and foremost, I think you need to understand that you are a vibrational being, you're an extension of source energy, and you create everything that shows up in your life, either consciously or unconsciously. You either a deliberate creator or you do it unknowingly, but you are the creator, 100% sure. So why not put, and, and here's a great thing, and this kind of goes with what Michelle was saying. If you feel like you have everything that you need and want, guess what's going to continue to show up in your life? Everything you need and want. Everything you need and want. More of it. Whoa, this is great. Now you start having feelings of insecurity and lack. Guess what's going to show up? <laughs> <laughs> But how do you, how do I stop those feelings? Because I guess they're my old identity and the minute almost like I feel it and I was a while and then I was walking and it was just so amazing. But then I come in and I, I see it, this, you know, this thought is like, you know, okay, you think you have everything, you whole and complete. In the meantime, you lost, you know, the friends here and your brother is not coming back to you. Your your best friend is not, you know, okay, I can't so, reach. So you're getting in your own way. So how do you stop? How do you turn that off? Don't yeah. feed it. What you feed grows. When you simply place your attention on mm -hmm. that, that's what you're going to get more of. Why? Yeah, I you're must say, yeah, I must say was less powerful because I, I just noticed that and kind of let go did something different. But it's it's showing up still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and you said, you know, okay, you mentioned the word loss. So, you know, you say everything's great. And then I feel like I lost this or this didn't manifest like my brother is still in another country. As long as you placed your attention on your brother not being here, still being in another country, here's your brother in another country, here's your brother, you know, in the same country as you. As long as I really you don't want him here, though, that's not okay. what I want. I just hey, want him to like out. me. Yeah. <laughs> I want to have a relationship with him. He has family there, so he's not going to come here. But... You don't know that. How do you know that? You psychic? <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know he's going to come here. I can't what? even say a word because, see, everything I'm saying has already be limiting beliefs in there. So, so how can I manifest something? Okay, how do you change it? Only give your thoughts and your attention to that which makes you feel good and happy and smile. The moment you catch yourself thinking a negative thought or a negative belief, anything that doesn't feel good, redirect your attention immediately because the thought happens this quick, bam, and it's gone. It is only until you do this and place your attention back on the thought that that thought turns from a mustard seed into Mount Everest. And before long, it literally consumes us and we become a slave to that thought, imprisoned by a, a simple thought that was like this big and took that quick. So the longer you place your attention on that, think about it, speak about it, um, dream about it, whatever, write about it, it will continue to get bigger. And if it is something, if it is a thought that doesn't make you feel good and it only happens for a split second, you're flirting with disaster. You're asking for that suffering. You're asking, you're asking for the pain, right? So the thoughts are not what will teach me uh, my limiting beliefs is the events actual in the present moment. If something just thoughts appearing and disappearing is not my belief, right? Mm -hmm. It's actual reality now that will teach me the lesson. Thoughts sure. are the past, right? Sure. Are the past. Wait, what about the past? No, thoughts are, they're coming from the past. They're just sure. being like re, you know, repeated from the past. These are not new thoughts. The ones that cause me, you know, hurt and pain. Right? Sure, yeah. So where are you? Where is your mind past, present, or future when a thought like that comes up you just said it i just want to i just want to hear it again make sure i'm 
<laughs> so where where's your where's your where's your mind? Is it past, present, or future? I mean, if I notice, if I notice, and I'm able to, it's let more go simple. On. It's simpler than that. Break it down for us, Kelly. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here. Please. Actually, Kelly, Kelly, before you speak, I actually want to give your partner a chance because okay. she joined early. All right. So I want Caesar. Are you are you good? Can we move Hold to Kelly? Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold yeah, that thought, yeah. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want could... I want your partner Kelly to speak. I'll just you conclude with this real quick. Yeah, I just want to conclude with this. So again, um, just refocus your attention. Focus attention. To that which makes you feel good. In a nutshell, when it when a thought, we know where it comes from. Eckhart specifies this like crazy. When a you know bad feeling appears or whatever, just ask yourself where's where's your mind? It's in the past. It's in the future. Because if it's the present, that's probably not going to be there. So just. Always give your attention to that which makes you feel good. And the things that you desire, um, or let's just say the things that make you feel good will continue to show up. Fantastic, thank you. So I have one from uh, from Michelle about trust, little little things, and you about the refocusing. Okay, what's next? Kelly, come on. <laughs> Kelly? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Pudam. Okay, there. I got a couple of things. Um, there, what you can absolutely manifest from an ego space, and you can manifest from a more heart aligned centered space. And it doesn't mean that either one is good or bad. Sometimes it's survival. Like if you need a new job, you do want to manifest that, so you have to take steps to be able to do that. Where our ego comes into play, though, sometimes is that we're fixated on what something should look like. And we want to manifest. And even though we're very specific about what we want to manifest, we also have to be open that it might be grander and greater than what we're actually thinking. So when I think about manifestation, there's a couple of things. One is that I'm holding space for something inside of me. And I was, I can't remember if I was on a webinar or what, but it was just recently actually that we were talking about how your nervous system actually has to be able to get used to that new place that you want to be in your life, whatever it is you want to manifest. Like there was money mentioned before, because a lot of times people want to manifest. We all, we talk a lot about manifesting um, abundance of money. Everyone talks about that, right? So there's, um, but you also have to have your nervous system used to that. So if you are, in a place where you've never had something before like let's say it's for example even with your brother that you haven't talked to him in a long time you need to get your nervous system used to what does it feel like to be able to talk openly with him how would that make me feel what kind of space of joy inside is that going to feel like for me mm -hmm. and and to hold that for yourself and so when those thoughts come in that oh i don't have that yet then that's where you can get sad and you can pull yourself down. That's what's been happening. Yes, because I'm, I'm imagining how it would be, you know, to have it's almost like and then he gets on like passes by and ignores me when I speak with my mom. And that is like a blow. It's like, OK, you know, get yeah. over yourself. You wrote him beautiful letter, you know, from based on thick and hot, you know, about the um you know the communication loving and so yeah Go. yeah so when you feel sad that's you know or start to feel sad observe that and instead of going into that kind of space where it's like oh I wish I had that and I don't have it yet because it's so easy for us to do that and I know because I've been there it's not we have to allow the time too because there's also a divine timing to things that we are not in control of. We might want something yesterday and that doesn't mean it's not coming, but we have to let go of when that's gonna happen. It might be tomorrow, it could be five days from now, maybe it's five years, but just continue to hold that space for something that you want and, not, and allow it to happen when it's going to. Because I think as human beings, we're always in our head and thinking, and we're thinking, instead of feeling that, oh, I'm thinking I want this, I'm thinking I want this, when, and, and actually the thinking about it is pushing it away. 
Whereas if we just hold that space for it. And I know I have, uh, patience was not my virtue. <laughs> like, let's put it that way. Kelly's laughing. He knows. And I was not a patient yeah, that's person. That's me too, yeah. Patience, yeah. yeah. And so I had to practice patience with myself and with my nervous system and to be like, oh, well, I, I can't be so upset about this or, and the more that you relax your nervous system and you relax into that space of joy, that if you get sad about your brother, for example, just think about how joyful that would be that when he says hi to you for the first time in a long time, like how happy would you feel that mm -hmm. you, when that happens and, and allow that to settle into, <laughs> into yourself. And then I know this wasn't your question, but at the beginning, when you said about um, about uh, inheriting money, for example, right? That that's another thing is that people are like, oh, well, I don't want to inherit it that way. But I, I, my question is, but but why wouldn't you want that if that is meant for you, and someone gave that to you, and you have that wealth that was for you. And so it's, but it came with the price. In other words, you know, that's kind of, well, yeah, but I get, but that's also how we're thinking about it, how we're perceiving it because oh, this person, right. This it. person, right. We, we attach that, that, Oh, I only got this because of this bad thing happened, but it's whether or not you look at that saying, don't give the gift horse, don't look gift horse in the mouth kind of. Yeah. Or that's <laughs> yeah. Because if that gift is meant for you from someone, it's, it is sad when people pass away, we have, you know, those things happen, but it's also a part of life. And if that person during their life decided that they wanted to give you that as a gift so that you wouldn't have to worry about anything, that's something that's meant for you. And you should be open to receiving that and, and to allowing that into your life. Now, we don't want to have an ego thing where and I've seen it in families and some of my own family that people are waiting for someone to die so they can get an inheritance, <laughs> right? Like that's the yeah. opposite, right? That's the other part of it. That's mm -hmm. the ego part of it where people are waiting for that thing to happen. But if it's a gift and it's just, you know, because death is a part of our lives, that if that happened and it may, you know, there's always a grieving process, but if that was a gift and you've been holding that space for you know, abundance, and maybe you didn't expect it to come that way, but that's how it came to you. That's okay. It's okay to accept that because you've been holding that space. So we just can't have expectations sometimes about when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, but you have to hold that space of joy. And that space of joy, it can be really hard to open up to if we've closed ourselves off from it for such a long time. Thank you, Kelly, so much. But you also uh, reminded me something that Eckhart Tolle said, that if we want to, you know, manifest something or we have intention, we still, our most important focus is to have that present moment, successful present moment, because if some, mm -hmm. he was giving example of the book when he just wrote Power of Now and sent it to Deepak Chopra, I think, for the thing, and he didn't even respond and whatever he said that if that in that moment he decided to be spiteful and upset and write angry letter and stuff the actual recommendation that came years later wouldn't come because he would destroy that relationship before right. it even started by reacting through his disappointment yeah because we can't take it personally, right? If somebody else doesn't do something when we think they should, right? right? Like that's right. If I, or, you know, like if I always try to honor the things that I tell people that I'm going to do, but sometimes I'll ask people something and maybe they don't respond right away. You know, especially in our daily lives right now, because email, text, like everything is so instant, right? That we have this expectation that we should have what we want and manifest it instantly. And mm -hmm. that's something that I've learned is that it's, it's holding a space and you just have to not have the expectation that, you know, this is going to happen the, right away or tomorrow, 
-hmm. you know, something's going to happen when it's meant to happen. And sometimes you can, you can feel the momentum building towards something. Absolutely. And being specific is great when you're, when you're listing the things that you want or how you want to do it. It's also, but also to let go of, to also put the intention that if it's what I want is meant to be even better then I'm open to that too. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> open is that's a good, good sign, yeah. not less, just or more yeah. <laughs> is that that right? <laughs> yeah i like that that's really playful thank you i love that good thank, thank you kelly thank you so i wanted to read what christina said that was incredible thank you so much for that advice um christina said eckhart tolle tells us that the manifestation has to come from the vertical dimension the being and thus we can enjoy it without being attached if we do it from the horizontal dimension the physical world has the other side duality we are going to experience suffering and i think what she means by duality is we are going to co-create the polarity if we do it from the ego then uh we will manifest the polarity so in when once kelly said something about emotion uh I wanted to bring what Dr. Joe Dispenza says is part of manifestation is the, th the thought sends the signal out and thought is electrical en energy. It's like, it's got a light value to it, right? Electromagnetic frequency. The emotional field is what is going to draw that experience into this present moment. Your brother walks away, doesn't look at you, right? Without acknowledging you. Mm -hmm. What you have to do as he's walking away, you say, in your heart, you say, I love you, my brother. Hello. Thank you for walking away from me. I thank you for this visual that I see you. I at least get to see you. That it's not like I'm not seeing you. Thank you for at least appearing in my, that's what you do. So what does that do to your feeling? Wow, it elevates it. It's what uh, Caesar suggested to focus on what you want, just being happy. That and you. that is what Dr. Do Joe Dispenza teaches is we are constantly, if you look at all his meditations, look at all his knowledge that he's giving, he's saying you're in a new body, new environment in a whole new time you're in a new body new environment in a whole new time you end another meditation new body because you are no longer you're changing boxes constantly you're no longer in that same in that infinity of potentials you're no longer the same person until you can believe that you are changing you will not change so the manifestation that we do as part of following the spiritual practice is not so much as I want wealth, I want abundance, I want this. I want to change my state of consciousness. Every time I finish a meditation, I want to be in a new body, new, a whole new environment in a whole new time. Because he says, we signal the environment. Don't make the environment signal your, your genes. Don't let the environment signal your genes. You signal the genes. Your emotional state, your body will determine what's going to happen because you're co-creating your reality from your emotional state. But right? does it only mean so, uh, mental or are you actually physically? The emotional feeling? state. How are you feeling? Like when your brother, you said when your brother passed uh, or, or this thought that I lost my friends. Instead of that, if you have the thought, I'm going to make, we have so many new friends. Yeah. I'm making so many new friends that I share the same kind of passions. I'm making so many new friends that share the same passion about medical. Look at Louise, how much she shares the same enthusiasm, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have for medical medium, Louise has for medical medium. So uh, don't you want to be with a person that shares the same passion? Yeah. Or do you want to be yes. with a person that is butting heads against you and not doing, and you're looking at them and going, why are you not following the medical medium protocol? Right. That's I'm talking about the medical, I'm blue in the yeah. face talking about the medical medium protocol. 
Do you want to be that? Or you want to be with Francesca who's saying, oh, I'm doing my celery juice? Mm. That's true. Right? right? So instead of, so it's always changing the narrative that we are, uh, yeah, experience is happening, but what is the label, like Kelly was saying, right? What is the narrative that we are attaching, the story that we are attaching to what is, what we are experiencing? Because that will determine your next, so that, that thought process, and I want you to uh, focus on that, that thought process that said, I am not someone that people uh not I, I am someone where the friends have old friends have left me I'm someone where my brother even my brother does not love me that is your old self your old self that as a child was feeling insecure was coming from a lack sense of lack and incompleteness and always wanted people come love me come people come love me Right. please come approve of me please come appreciate me please come instead of that if you change the narrative to oh I have so many people I mean how much do Louise and I love you why can't you bathe in that shower I love that... all of you it's so exactly incredible. bathe in that I love and say every Wednesday yeah. they, they they want to hear from me they want to hear that did I do the shots what did I feel after the brain saver shots I did the nerve shifter shot. Poonam wants to know what, what, what happened after the nerve shifter mm -hmm. shot. Did she love it? Be, did she, because it's a mutual enthusiasm, right? Like I felt it, uh, oh, I did this shot and this is how I felt. I did the adrenal fight and flight shot and I felt such a cooling effect in my brain, right? I did the trauma loss and shock shot and I felt such a cooling effect in my brain. So did you feel that? So there's like a mutual enthusiasm. I mean, what more do we want, mm -hmm. right? Do we want to do we want to sit it. and do we want to sit and yap about uh, old things? What happened to my ex husband and how torturous torturous was life? But then he wouldn't even take out the trash. He wouldn't do things. He wouldn't take care of the baby. He wouldn't. Do you want to? I, I don't want to manifest that. No, no, no. I want. No, no. Her... Do you want? Do you want to exchange those stories? Or do you want these new new experiences where you are always having a positive experience, right? And this is what Dr. Joe Dispenza is saying. He has no time for the past. Anybody says, oh, this person is in the hospital. This person, he has no time for the past. It's always about what am I going to be in the future, right? What? Who am I? Who am I? Who is looking through those eyes? Yeah, he's actually saying that he's creating memories from the future. So your exactly. body is familiar with He's, that. We are, and there is a, medit a walking meditation that we did during the advanced retreat where he says, uh, towards the end, he says, look, look at the person who started this walk. Look at the sincerity of that person that started the walk. Now pull this future you, now pull that old you to this future you. And you like completely like you get into this state of, oh my God, so much emotion comes because you're seeing the old you. You're seeing mm -hmm. the old you that used to think that way, that, oh, I lost all my friends. Oh, I lost all my brother, my brother. And like Caesar says, right? You're, if you hold that stick, I lost friends. I lost, the more you manifest that, right? It's not even about, um, uh, and when you get into the state of fullness and, oh, I am, I am full, I am whole, and I can experience this energy. And it's like Kelly says about heart coherence, it's brain and heart coherence. The moment we get into this brain and heart coherence in this faster frequency, things like Michelle said, like things just happen. When you want to go on a retreat, the retreat happens, the money for the retreat comes like I, I found money for to go. It's like two thousand dollars to go to an advanced retreat. I found money for it, right? I got a better paying job this year, so I had enough to save over, right? Mm -hmm. And it just happened. Like the universe just presented the job in February. By October, I was able to afford the retreat. So I didn't even ask. I didn't even say I wanted. Uh, no, we did. April and I did manifest this. 
April and I used to discuss <laughs> before the uh, live would start that we wanted to attend the Dr. Joe. Let me move over to Kelly and ask Kelly. He was he's holding his thought. We interrupted <laughs> his thought. So Kelly, what did you there. want to say? Thank you. Um. Well, manifestation is is an interesting topic because there are many different layers to manifestation. Um, all of us manifest through our ego, through our mental projections, and our heart feelings. The way humans work is energy. We are energy first. We are feeling second. We are thoughts third. So just let that sink in for a little, for a second. We are energy first and we are feelings second. So feelings are the body. What body, like sensation? No, no, no. Just, just, no? <laughs> Sorry. What did, you, what, what did you just do there? You, you jumped in with an answer, right? Give her a nickel, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> so we are energy first. Caesar, I love what you what you're saying about um, you know, how we're, we're all spirit first, right? And it, it's all about the feeling. Manifestation is all about the feeling. This is why being aware of the physical body is so incredibly important. Whether it's through walking, yoga, lifting weights, martial arts, qigong. <clears throat> and there are different aspects. The um, bill of sale for <clears throat> the law of creation and the book, The Law of Creation, is actually very misleading because it is based on the concept of attraction through mental projection. And this is, you know, the secret of the elites and the secret of blah, blah, blah. These it's, it's through mental projection. So what we want is we want something more, which is why I really love what Kelly was saying about how we have to hold space for the feeling, the feeling of that joyful manifestation plus more. Not just that little space, but more, right? And joy has a really, really big role to play in that. And joy is not about uh, fear or love. It is just a simple, pure experience of clarity, of understanding that we can give to ourselves, first and foremost, these spaces of clarity, of understanding our feelings by sitting with them. This is why meditation is so important. Because through meditation or, well, any practice of observational discipline, right? Any, any moment you take to observe yourself and to sit with that is giving yourself a space of joy of being able to observe and to give yourself more of you and to learn how to feel more of you. Um, but then I don't need anything else to manifest because those moments when I experience this, I'm just so content. <laughs> there's no room for manifestation. There's no ego attachment either no. then. Right. There's no role, right? Because that's one of the things that the ego loves to do is to assign roles to certain aspects of our lives. Or this is what this means. This part of my life means this mm -hmm. because of this. When we are um uh yeah, and, and you have to be aware of of you know the state your mind is in, the state your heart is in what the actual story that is pulling you forward really is because as i said on i think it was was it last week or the week before about you know manifesting you know my, my <laughs> one thing i know i manifested was my ex-wife and i know exactly the moment and exactly where i was and what hall you know what building i was walking by and, and what time of night it was so having discipline with ourselves Two, as Caesar said, you have to watch your thoughts. You have to hold space, as Kelly was saying, against the negative dialogue, against the mm. negative scripts, right? You not only have to hold space for what you want, 
but you also have to hold space against what you don't want. And you have to be aware of the interplay. You have to be aware of how your ego will try and hijack that whole process and why. The why is exceptionally important, but it usually boils down to the simple reality of a preconceived, preconditioned story of us believing because this is something that we learn that we don't deserve that, whatever that happens to be. And manifesting from the heart. So this is this is where understanding the mind and heart connection is so important. Why practices such as meditation, yoga, kirtan, toning, chanting, all of those things are important to explore so that you develop many points of personal reference for the context of how you feel in many different situations so that you can then practice like what Caesar was actually pointing to was practicing talking to yourself through those experiences, scripting yourself, seeing what your mind does, what your feelings do, so that then you can practice holding that space. And Kelly said it really, really well in terms of talking to ourselves. I think that was about holding the space and how we actually address that within ourselves, how we actually hold space within ourselves, mentally, emotionally, energetically, on all levels. So that when we are actually trying to consciously participate and consciously manifest something, we know that we are holding space for it. We're not just throwing that out there and going, yeah, that's going to happen. We also have to be, we also have to understand the balance of what the negative aspects of our conditioning and or illusions and stories and or, and or, and or will try and do to us to keep that from happening or to keep us believing that we don't deserve that thing, that space or that experience. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of manifest, a lot of manifestation happens in a space of complete unconsciousness or such where it happens so fast that we miss the feeling of how it happened. Right. And as I said, like <clears throat> my, my, my ex-wife had a cat and I cured it of cataracts just by loving it for a brief moment. I was like, Oh, it's such a beautiful, you know, it was, it's such a beautiful little, little cat. It was great. Like, you know, and I was just like, Oh, that's so, you know, sad that it has cataracts. And I just sent it love. I was just like, it had, I had this moment and went, whoop. And I went, Oh, wait a minute. Um, I'm like, that was interesting. Hmm. And then five minutes later, my ex-wife's mom was, is going, Oh my God, what did you do? What the, how come she doesn't have cataracts anymore? I didn't do anything. I was like, mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't know. Um, excuse me. So you can have real quick moments of manifestation and we are actually quite used to, we're so used to manifesting our lives in this 3D reality that we take it for granted. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, manifesting, you know, food. You know, we're so used to pulling it out of the cupboard. Manifesting our own personal decisions about ourselves and our lives. That's manifestation. But there's so many aspects of living that we take for granted that we've just gotten so used to that we don't appreciate all of all of you know the entirety of the universe collaborating to give you that piece of bread or that soup or that book. I mean, all the electrons that went into coming together into the shirt you're wearing today. Or even that computers that allows us to meet right. so I can hear what you guys are saying. Wow. Right. Yeah. There's so many simple everyday things that we take for granted because we're just told to. We've been taught to just take everything for granted and not understand and not let ourselves feel this vast tapestry of connections that bring us things 
you know, um, yeah, like, yeah, this laptop, all, the, all these electrons that are moving slow enough, that have chosen to move slow enough in the form of this alu aluminum and this glass screen right. for crying out loud, you know? Uh, this is also the other thing too, like what Caesar was saying about how we are energy right we're, we're we're taught that you know we're just a meat sack but we're not mm -hmm. all of the electrons the molecules the atoms that have come together that have chosen that have chosen to be and and yes chosen consciously chosen to participate in your experience that have energetically come together and that have chosen to support you in this embodiment, in this expression of divine source energy, learning how to look at itself and observe itself to understand deeper aspects of creation. Incredible. Let me ask you, I know I had after last talk about manifestations and Poonam talking about your dispense and stuff, I know I don't I don't know how much energy I need, but I always wanted to heal myself. <laughs> Not to be nearsighted. I have I am nearsighted and have astigmatism. Okay. And um, I figure I can I, I have very good pair of glasses. Mm. But when I walk when I go for walks or even drive to pool short distances, I don't wear gloves and I, you know. I prefer not to, but obviously to read, like right now I have to go really close to read right. without it. But uh, is that would be um, ego trying to, okay, prove to yourself that you can heal yourself or, you know, that I actually have the capacity to do that. And, but is it, is it necessary? It's like, do I need to do that? If I have glasses, I mean, maybe I'll just concentrate on something more important than healing my eyesight. Why? Why is healing your eyesight not important? Why? Why is because why, I think why is the curiosity not important? Why? Why would you not want to explore that option of expressing your divine potential? Go for it. Yeah, I just wanted to have a good motivation because it, it it was coming up for me as the reason why you have that nearsightedness and uh, astigmatism it be, because of your limiting belief that the future is bad. I was always afraid what's going to happen, what's going to come to the door. It's like my future. So I'm nearsighted now to keep me here because i can't look past I, I would actually i actually look at um see i've i've had glasses and i spent 20 years without glasses i spent 20 first you know age one to 21 with glasses and then sort of like age 20 i've only been wearing glasses again for a little while and that has to do with screen time but also the amount of information that i process puts pressure on my eyes because there's so much electrical information that my system my nervous system is processing through my nervous system <clears throat> that i need to support my eyes so this ego attachment to the belief that something bad is going to happen you need to look at that it's not about your eyes it's not about something bad happening it's not about your eyes at all Right? It's the trust, right? Is the trust, Michelle. <laughs> it's the feeling of going inside, right? You want to look at that. You want to hold that space of where you have been attached to believing this. This is where manifestation actually really happens. Is you go into your brain pan, that space, wherever, wherever that resistance is, like you look at that belief and you go and find that feeling of resistance to it changing. You go and find that feeling of resistance that, or that space that you don't want to look at, that, that space that's hidden by our shadow. This is how shadow works, where it keeps us from believing that there is something else. 
right? It's not about your eyes. It's not about the glasses. It's about that feeling that you're hiding from, that there's actually something more that you can give to yourself. That there's something more that you can feel beyond that there's something more than that trapped space of that ego attachment to that belief that something bad is going to happen that you've held on to. Because again, my own personal experience, I'm speaking from personal experience, go inside, find that space of resistance, that feeling of resistance, hold it, give it a big hug, throw some popcorn at it or something. <laughs> I know Kelly said invited for a tea. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sit down with it, put two cups out, pour the tea, sit and have a conversation with it. Because that is how you change that space inside, that feeling, and how you deconstruct and unravel those spaces that your ego has hidden from you that it doesn't want you to understand or feel. It's not, not even understand, not even thought process, but feel. Because when you learn how to feel those spaces of resistance and are able to look at them, then the magic starts to really yeah. happen. So how, how do you, your, your way compares to Dr. Joe that doesn't wanna look in the past. He doesn't have even time. And you telling me to actually sit with it. And, you know, so is that, do they go? My, my, my own person? personal, I will disagree with Dr. Joe Dispenza on that till the cows come home. Oh. That is just from my personal experience and from 30 years of actively participating in my work. And understand, the past is super important. I don't care who, who says what. That's my own personal experience. He doesn't say uh, ignore your past. He says observe it, observe your behavior. That's what we observed, right? My behavior is that when my brother passes by, right. I feel that lack and incompleteness. And, right. and then I respond, oh, my brother did not even say hi. That's right. an observation of your past behavior. Yep. Hmm. So you're constantly observing all your conditioned patterns and undoing them, saying, oh, when I, my brother passes that way and does not acknowledge yeah. me, then this is my response. And now my the future self, the future Patricia, this is what changing boxes, the future Patricia, the way future Patricia is going to respond. Every time my brother passes, I say, I love you, brother. I at least get to get a chance to see you because you're passing by when I'm talking to my mom. So that's your future self. And you are working towards, you're, you're asking about manifestation. We want to improve. That's what the soul, the soul wants to evolve. The soul wants to be a better version of itself from yesterday to today, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the future self, the future Patricia, and you're trying that, right? You're, you've been, that's your journey for the past year, that you are being a better person than what you were last year, right? Last month, yesterday, you want to be a better, the next time you're, uh, something happens with your coworker, do you have the same reaction? And that's where Kelly's saying, and Dr. Yep. Joe says, look yep. at your reaction, that's your old self. Stop yeah. your old self and your old reactions. And that's what yeah. even Eckhart is saying, right? That's yes. the karmic law. You're participating in the karmic law, which is compensatory, if you keep doing the old condition patterns. So undo your old condition, let go of resentment, let go of anger, let go of frustration, let go of uh, complaining. You know, the first four chapters of a new earth. Mm -hmm. and tell the that to thing. do it by recognizing it and actually giving some space to sit with it and you then... overwrite it you say yeah. i'm not going to yeah. respond that way your presence says i am not going to when my brother passes i'm no longer going to, going to pass um, i mean when he passes i'm no longer going to respond with oh i feel that he did not even look at me i'm so useless that he didn't not even this man passed across and he did not even uh, the same thing with your father you know you've been saying uh, my father is so rigid and my father has uh, his uh, instead of that look at him and say I love you dad I love you for giving me life 
I mean, I, I, I absolutely love my parents because the, this life that I'm proud of is because of them. If they wouldn't have come, the man and the woman wouldn't have come together. No matter what my mother did, no matter, I, I am eternally grateful to them for giving me this life. That I a lot of molecules in one place. Exactly. Coming together. The creative principle well, that created a lot of the universe coming together in one place. Exactly. So, yeah. thank you so, for the clarification, Puno. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. And th that's the thing is what he's saying is don't think of the past as the past you. <laughs> Work towards the new you. And who is who are you? Who is looking through those eyes? Yep. And it is all about brain and heart coherence. Just yeah, which part said. of you is looking through your eyes? Is it all of you? Is it is it the healed you? Is it the part that is attached to this story about your your eyeballs and, and your glasses? Or, or is it, you know, right? Well, karma has everything to do with how you're using your awareness, how you're actively participating with your awareness, in your awareness, while your awareness is aware of your awareness. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Well, and Ken, oh. loved it. Ken loved that tangle, 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 tangle. And that's <laughs> what you want to manifest is you're thinking of manifesting. Oh, I, I, I'm not talking about manifesting Lamborghini or manifesting um, a big house or any of those manifestations. I'm talking about these manifestations, just like manifesting a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat. Now you want to attend a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat. Maybe you want to go see Anthony William, maybe at some live. How did you him, know? You, you want him to acknowledge that Patricia actually Guys, follows his. Uh, there uh, was a big lottery. Protocol. Yeah, there was a big lottery. And I was actually imagining winning all that money to start just supermarkets, only selling medical medium, you know, you know, whatever you need so, for everything see, you you want to do those right but that <laughs> happens that happens now now you're asking how does that happen why did it not happen why did you not win that lottery ticket right why did it not happen right it did not happen because your brain and heart are not in coherence and that that is the faster frequency like i'm telling you right when you get to that brain and heart coherence the physical experience is you will see this energy that Caesar and Kelly are talking about from your toe till your head, you'll feel a river of energy flowing. Like you will feel like there's something moving in you. Like there's, like when I experienced it at the retreat, when we were doing the coherence healing, you, you want, like some people, they yell, like at, at the retreat. They're, they're shouting and screaming because they cannot handle the end. Like maybe they, for the first time they've experienced it, right? Like that something moved in their body. They, they just scream like the all, all day long, seven days a week, all the seven days, people are screaming throughout the meditations because- Is warm, the energy? Because all I get when I meditate with Joe Dispenza tape, you know, the recordings, I feel waves of cold like cold wave that's going through my body, like cold. I think Lakshmi said something uh, like, if you're experiencing cold, it's guilt and shame and leaving your body. And if it's warm, it's fear leaving your body. So it's just, it's just different, but I, you do, the temperature does rise. Um, let me go back to Michelle since she's been waiting. Uh, Michelle, you want to add something to what you already said? Um, not much, just that I think, um, gratitude, a sense of worthiness and a dash of humility. Oh yes. Oh yes. And that's why I did an ego shifter today because <laughs> I needed that. Yeah. Because is it coming through ego? Because why don't we want to wear glasses? Like, what is the reason behind not wanting to work investigate? Is it coming from the being, like Christina said, the vertical dimension, or is it coming from no, the I horizontal? Like my I, 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 right. I just wanted to see how, like kind of like Poonam was saying, how much, what can you do? We hear about this amazing power that we have, 
and then we so little stuck in the ego i would like but are we testing it is that the reason you're picking something yes. are you testing it <laughs> yes <laughs> what is the reason because your ego is testing it so pick something that really is authentic that is deep within your soul so you may have to journal you may have to kind of kind of sit with that like for me i haven't been wanting to be a yoga instructor or a spiritual instructor, I am so thrilled just being a student. And then I'm like, well, what is that about me just wanting to be a student? I enjoy being a student. Why do I have to go to the next level of being a teacher? Or do, when I'm perfectly happy and content, because is it a conditioned mindset? Because if you love something, you should be wanting to go to the next level. What's that next level? Who's telling my, that's the next level. So. I don't know. I've investigated that for me. And I'm like, wait, I I'm happy just deepening my practice. What I would mean, say and that, what was authentic for me may not be authentic for somebody else. What I would say, Michelle, you should look at the reverse of it too. Why is it that you don't want to be a teacher? Because uh, you don't, um, one thing I know for sure, every soul wants to give. Mm -hmm. Right? I give in other we, ways because my giving may not be in that way. It, it, my, my time and energy right now is where it needs to be. But I, and but then it must I, be, it, it needs to be something that uh, you, you have to examine that. I, I it is, am I creating a limiting belief and saying, I'm always going to be a student. I'm just saying, am I creating a limiting belief? When I say, you know, because uh, that's another backdoor of the ego, Michelle, where the ego, we have infinite potential, the capacity to give and the capacity of what we can do. It's unparalleled. You know, we are legends, uh, like uh, right now, um, uh, the natural uh, advanced follow-up retreat, they said legends in the making, right? We are legends in the making. Michelle didn't say she didn't want to be a teacher. She said she was content being, that's why I'm saying, why does she not want to be a teacher? But that, but those are actually two different, two different things. Like she did, she never said she didn't want to. She's just content being something. Right. And that she and has, that's what she has but she did explore it in herself and she found that she's content doing that. But so that's what I'm really... saying is, uh, Kelly, you'll have to hear what I'm saying. No, I'm I, saying, think I heard what you said. What is, yeah. what is it that is coming and blocking that, you know, because- But I don't think there's like, anything like what blocking I'm, her what I'm saying, What I'm saying <laughs> is we have infinite potential, right? So you yeah. almost can be, you can, you can almost say, I, I will be a teacher, right? You should be at that point where you say, I would love to influence others and work towards it. I would love to influence more people. I'm really good at yoga. I, I'm just taking an example. I'm really good at yoga. I, I would be a wonderful teacher. I, I have a lot of patience. Why, why don't I explore it, right? That would be a better answer than saying, I'm That's content. Even open -ended. I'm but content. I have explored it's more, it. I mean, it's I have more, explored those concepts. It's just that in my life, there's a, in a practical sense, there's this energy that would be required to deepen that practice to that degree, which right now I don't want to put my time and energy into that. So I'm perfectly happy right. deepening so, it in a different so way. So somehow you, the ego has said, okay, uh, the mind has said, the mental chatter has said, the narrative, it's okay, I, I can, you know, that, that's what uh, Marianne Williamson has this, right? We are powerful behind measure, but we want to create our own, uh, you know, Limits. who but are I we? Find, but I find when I am one-on-one, -on -one, at that point, I may be a teacher to somebody. Exactly. When I explore these things, I'm saying teacher in the traditional sense of the word right to get the diploma the certification or whatever that that means i i don't have that desire what to necessarily I go is, to that yeah what i would say is yeah right now it may not be but don't limit yourself by saying no i'm never going to do that 
or I'm no I never say you. never but right now that's not yeah. the space I'm in that's good that's good perfect perfectly said because that's one one of the things that's another thing that Dr. Joe drills right same thing with Eckhart we have infinite potential what we can do and maybe one day the Patricia gets that lottery ticket and she manifests supermarkets or food trucks <laughs> that uh, deliver medical medium food, right? Who knows? We don't know what that person's potential is, but we, uh, you know, just holding back and saying, oh, I, I, I don't think maybe I can do that. Then it's not that I don't think I can do that. I know that I could do that. It's just, I choose right. not to. Right. Yeah. It's not your choice to make, Michelle. <laughs> it's the divine will tell you, Michelle, tomorrow, yoga teacher. Let's do it. Let's just like just like Ken is gonna write his book, right? Anything else, Michelle, that will write no, for I'm you? I'm good. I'm good. You're good. good thanks. Thank you. I I'm I'm like uh, really really between all these teachers, between Eckhart and Joe, Dr. Joe and Anthony William. Like each one saying that we can heal no matter who who we are, where we are, what's going on with us, we can heal, right? One thing everybody has to remember, that divinity that Kelly was talking about, that, that power that Kelly was trying to tell Patricia that she has the power to heal her eyes is there in each and every one of us whether it is eyes or any kind of physical ailment, anything that we have, uh, we have the power to heal. We just need to get into that brain and heart coherence, that high frequency of vibration. And that's the art of allowing as well. That is what is will pull. Then we are at the vibrational frequency where we pull from that vortex, whatever we put in the vortex, that's the art of allowing. Right, Caesar. That's the art of alone. So, Ken, you want to wrap wrap this up and yeah. say something about manifestation and what you would like to manifest? Yes, I know you want to go somewhere in the in Maine, settle down in Maine. Um, no, I don't want to go to Maine. But uh, and anyway, no, I I am going to live in a log cabin in a lake. I, that I know. <laughs> It yet, it's not going to be in Maine, though. It's not going to. I don't think it's going to be in Maine. No, it's too cold. It's but, already. Is it going to be there. Vermont? Then it's going to be in Vermont. Uh, Vermont's cold too. No, it might be one of the Carolinas, or it could be uh, Georgia. That's where okay. I'm. That's where I'm thinking it's going to be. So far. We love it. Let's manifest that for you. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Uh, I've got. I'm sitting here listening to everybody, and I love it. And um, I just want to say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I feel like we play both roles. We're always a teacher or we're a student. And um, what I want to say, uh, Patricia, is manifestation. I feel like, do you think that manifestation is vibration and that we co-create? I want to say, look what you did tonight. You co-created this manifestation, whether you realize it or not. And I feel like we're all a piece of it. It's like a puzzle. We're all putting a puzzle together. And so I really want to, what I would love to say, I know I'm going to watch this over what we did tonight. Oh, tomorrow, yes. Okay. On the way home. Because there's so much that I want to, because this is really good for me, because I so many things I picked up from so many little nuggets that so many people have mentioned and I'm realizing that there's only one spirit here and it's working through all of us. And I feel like we're all connections and we're all working off one another because I feel like one person speaks, the other one speaks. And so, and all the questions that you're, you're, you're asking and how many times people were talking, Michelle, and you, you'll interrupt, you'll say different things. And that's why I would love for you to watch it all again so you can feel like everybody's mentioned about feeling, it's all about feeling, about manifestation. It's really, it's, it's getting out of the head, going into the heart. And then what happens is when the heart is, heart's intelligence 
is uh, actually co-creating and um, recreate what our thinking mind, how it, that's doing. Because before my thinking mind was trying to do everything. That's why it was a mess. So to, to, to listen to everybody speak and pick up your own information through yourself and how you feel on what, because there's certain things people are gonna say, you're gonna go, the dots are gonna come together. And if you can be at peace, be in the stillness and be present doing it, that's when the magic will happen. And you'll pick up so much information that you'll start answering your own questions. How do you manifest? You heard us, but we can't do it for you. You're the only one can do that. All we can do is share our experience on how it works for us. So that's all I have. <laughs> I really like that we manifested a lot of smiles today. Absolutely. And it's all about feeling good. Lightness. Yes. So when you're in your heart and you know it and you don't have those attachments and you don't have that vibrating energy of fear or thinking or anything else going on, just like everybody has said, the magic will just happen. And so Amazing. Thank you so much, Ken. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. So grateful for you. I am so grateful. Thank you. And uh, Kelly, Kelly actually corrected me. She said cold waves are usually releasing fear. That's what you said, Kelly, right? So, How much more fear do I have? <laughs> I mean, it depends on your Hold emotional. It. You, right? it. it depends on your emotional feel for that day. It may be like some other emotion for that day, right? So every day I get, every time I, every night when I lie down, under covers and everything i start the meditation there's those like couple maybe two three of that like it's not very unpleasant but it's cool it's like going through well i used to be cold all the time like i was a cold person where i i'm like the slippers and the big sweaters and the blankets and then the more you let that go I'm a very warm person now, <laughs> like it's changed. So oh. it's like, I, I, yeah, I don't in the winter. It's very interesting. Cause I used to bundle up all the time, especially in the winter and like big blankets and like everything. So that'll change your, like your body's chemistry will change when you let it, let it go. I don't um, let go as much anymore, like fear as much anymore, but it's, um, it, it'll come like I'll still have little things like that come up and I'll be meditating and I'll feel like the cold wave go and I'm like okay well whatever that was is gone but yeah it's I it's changed it'll change trust me it'll change I'm like a little hot person now sometimes <laughs> I would love that yes a little more absolutely yes yeah. always instead of bundling up you know so you're gonna Thanks. manifest a new you keep manifesting a new you Right, Patricia? You don't have to think about abundance. You don't have to think just a new you, newer you, where there is no fear, there is no guilt, there is no lack, there is no incompleteness, and see how the world changes around you, how many friends you attract in your life. And, and try and, just like Michelle said, right, try and find in your local area, like join a Tai Chi club. I know Gracie lives in the same area as you. And she goes to some Tai Chi place. I do every day a little bit of Qigong of what I picked up from. What Kelly I'm saying is going to a, go to a place where they are teaching it, right? So that you make friends. I mean, who are the people that are going to think similar? Like if you go to a yoga studio and spiritual studio and do yoga or go find a retreat, just like Michelle is saying, right? So you'll end up finding friends and then you kind of like get in touch with them and yeah. I can ask the Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, meditation group that is in the New York area New Jersey area and ask them if they would include you even though you have not uh, attended an advanced retreat so you can go for walking meditation with them they they probably meet and then go for a walking meditation together 
so you end up being with people that are similar mm -hmm. right on the similar path that's I'm what gonna, i'm gonna about. just tell you all my big secret that hmm, that's my limiting belief still but it still was connected with my anxieties i still don't feel that i'm ready to drive big long distances i honestly i drop certain places where i went and i know my roads but just getting the car and going somewhere an hour away when i don't know it's still not there yet can i say well, something I, to that go ahead Nisha. about 15 years ago um, my husband and i and joseph had a rollover accident on i-95 rolled over, spun around, and ended up upside down on the median. I saw my life flash before my eyes. Very fearful of driving for many years, long distances, especially in the mountain roads. But I made it a point. It took a long time to get over that fear mm. and to start driving. I had to drive three hours to get to my retreat. But the desire to attend that retreat I knew I had to get over that fear. I had to drive in the mountain roads for two hours to get to my yoga retreat. It was part of the process of trusting my ability to drive again, because I was driving when that accident happened. And it took me a long time, but I said, I'm not gonna be imprisoned by my fear anymore. The desire to get out there and experience what I wanted to experience in my soul, and it was a beautiful drive. It was a beautiful experience. I put on my music, my chants, whatever it is I wanted to hear um, on myself. I did it by myself, not knowing anybody. And I, it, it's liberating. So guess what I did? I want to go to the beach. I love the beach. But right now, the way I am, it's really by the mountains and lakes. So I've been thinking about beach, manifesting beach in like looking at the calendars and stuff. So I found on YouTube three hours of just waves on the ocean and I just play it. And my 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 head is like, see, you wanted the beach? We had the beach every morning. It's just, so that's the manifesting part that I wanted to manifest the real beach and instead, I found a way in my little box to just play the beach on the YouTube every day. And my my mind is satisfied. Well, you wanted the beach. You at the beach, right? But that's not what Michelle is saying. Michelle is saying, and that's what Dr. Judith Spencer is saying, your old self is the one that is fearful of driving, right? So what you're going to do is make yourself drive an hour long wherever the beach is. Right. You will drive, put yourself in a car on the weekend and drive whether you get there and then turn around and come back. That's fine. But make yourself drive. So then you will realize that, yeah, I know how to navigate. The phone has Google Maps. I, I know how to use just I can when to all the different yeah. states. Right. Pretty and he, he, he's not even that very good with technology, but he learned how to use the phone and get to all these remote areas and all these remote parks and find himself back and come back home and he's sitting in his home right he didn't get lost and how many states did he for the very first time all by himself go we i don't want to feel feel in the car anxiety i i don't want to feel it i'm a put on the like youtube that. thing of the ocean while you're driving do right. the adrenal fight and do something shot before to you calm. get into it right so that's you, Patricia, you're abandoning yourself. And when I did this, I realized that I needed to really, there's parts of me that was with me. I wasn't alone. So I would wake up in the morning and I would say, okay, what do you want to do today? I love you. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. I know you're afraid, but we're going to do this together. And it was incredible. It's just almost like identical what M Michelle just said, and she's smiling, and I'm like, I'm feeling, I'm feeling exactly, feeling what she's saying. I'm feeling because I just experienced this, and so that was my decision to say, I don't want to hold on to this anymore. I want a life, but I don't want to keep living what wasn't working for me. 
So I had to push myself. And I'll tell you something, it's like giving birth to a new me. It was incredible, just like Poonam was saying. And that's exactly what it was. I was in so many places and I could feel my sweat coming from me because I felt like I was lost. And I went, no, I'm not lost. I just took a detour. And I said, I'll get back on it because you never get lost. You just take a lot of detours in life. <laughs> just like Caesar was saying, you're going to go like this or are you going to go straight? And the thing is, is that's the beauty of breaking through. But the acceleration when you do it, it's like, oh, my God, I want these big mountains. And I'm like, I felt like I was on top of the mountain. I conquered my fear. And then, but you know what it was? There was another mountain to climb right after that one. <laughs> of course. That is life. It's one, one thing after another. And if I try anything new, I got to know that I'm going to go through uncomfortability. So enjoy the process, right? It's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. The universe will arise, uh, Patricia, like uh, for the retreat, right? You wouldn't believe it how many friends I asked if they would come, people living in Dallas who would come to the retreat with me so that I could uh, room and board with them because the uh, convention center, the hotel and convention center is 23 miles from where I am mm -hmm. and really bad traffic. If I get into rush hour traffic in Dallas, that ride is an hour and a half. 23 miles in Dallas. That's my, that's my trip to work every day. Mm -hmm. It's an hour and a half, right? But then nobody nobody joined me, right? Then I went anyway. I cannot do the medical medium protocol. I cannot make my heavy metal detox smoothie. It's better that I come back home in the evening. I can make my heavy metal detox smoothie or keep up mm -hmm. with my protocol. No matter what I eat during the day, the evening, I can keep up with the protocol. So, uh, and then my supplements, who's going to take all these supplements, like huge thing of supplements right. to this hotel, right? Oh, why do I have to pack? So I said, I decided I would drive. And this is a whole new, I went one weekend before to figure out where I need to go. Because just like you, I don't know, I cannot look at a map and get to a new place myself. Guess what happened during the retreat? One, the weather kept up. The other thing that happens in Dallas, the moment the weather is bad, again, there'll be traffic delays, right? People drive crazy. There'll be an accident. We'll get stuck in traffic. One, the weather kept up the whole seven and a half days. Two, he had the meditations at 6 a.m. in the morning. So I had to leave by 5, 5 a.m. I got there within 30 minutes at 5 a.m. There is no traffic in the path. Wow. The yeah, we do lose sleep because I have to wake up at three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning. Like there was one 4 a.m. meditation uh, on on Thursday. At that time, I I went to bed at 11. I had to wake up at one because I had to shower and be ready and leave by three, right? So that I get there by 3.30. In okay traffic, it's like 30 minute drive. Three o'clock in the morning, there's no traffic, mm -hmm. right? Five o'clock in the morning, there's no traffic. Perfectly, the universe lined up the schedule in such a way that I was able to make it. And I was able to drive to this place. And ultimately, I knew how to drive the 23 miles. And then he would have the whole thing until for 13 hours, right? So we were leaving at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night. If you were no leaving at eight, again. no traffic again. Right, because of the pandemic, the traffic dies down by seven seven thirty. Actually, until eight, Dallas actually has traffic. But mm -hmm. now, because of the pandemic, I noticed that by seven the traffic dies down. It's between four four p.m. till four four thirty p.m. till eight, uh, seven six thirty seven. So, on that note, please do okay. drive drive to a beach. Make make your manifest what you want when you intend. And this is what your new self is going to do. When you intend, I need to go to a beach or I want to go to a mountain, go to Vermont. It's like, what, two, two, two and a half hours away from New York, right? Go to Vermont, go, go to the beach. It's an hour and a half away. Go to the beach 
and do what you want to do, manifest what you want to do, and see how the universe lines up. Because the synchronicities is what will give you the confidence that I, I'm not operating out of my limiting beliefs. I actually can manifest things. And then that thing about Anthony William and doing uh, supermarkets <laughs> will happen. Okay? Start with the beach. <laughs> but start with the beach. There you go. Start with the beach. Start with driving, yeah. getting in the car and driving. Okay? Well, sometimes you, you can take, like, if it's a really big fear, like, make steps so that you've got these baby steps that you take that I'm going to do this and I feel, and you feel more confident in your own abilities. And you feel more confident and you have faith in yourself. And then there are some things in life where if you're afraid, you just have to take that leap because there might not be steps to take. You're just going to have to trust yourself that I'm, I got to do it. that. <laughs> Burn the boat, right? Be on the island. You have to make it. <laughs> Burn the yeah. boat. Get on the island. Incredibly amazing. Much love to everyone. Y'all have done Beautiful. eternally grateful. This was a mind-boggling conversation. Thank Namaste. you. Many Thank blessings. You. Thank Bye. You. Good night. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.